Okay, we're we're rolling. We're good. We're gonna get started. Damn, it's been a while since I've done one of these, and it's also because like I don't upload all the time, so it's like weird for me to get in. Hello. Okay, I'm gonna start being formal right. now. Welcome okay. to this is like episode three, right? Yeah, this is three because the last person I had on was what's his name Noah. Um. So hello, welcome to uh. I, I, I'm still not used to this. I'm still not used to doing it. But this is um, the Spider Bite cast, and now I have one of my uh, favorite cosplayers on, one of my uh, recently gained mutuals, ATX Spider. He makes really cool shit. And I want to be frank, I think the first time I saw your work, I was I was absolutely amazed. And I think, I, I think I'm not alone in that, because you make absolutely stunning work, and I think you your most popular suit is definitely like a it's like an eye catcher and it's i like i love seeing it it's are, are you saying that the most popular is the advanced or yeah the, the advanced suit is i i think that's the one that everyone knows you for but i feel like despite that one being the most popular when you go on your page and look at everything else everything else is just as good i think the advanced well, I... suit is only the most popular because like it's the most like it looks like the real thing that was my goal. No one else was doing it. Oh, yeah. And I, I wanted one. And so I just, I made it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you, how, how extensive does your background in sewing get? Because you just don't, you don't wake up one day and just, like, make an advanced suit. That is true. The advanced suit was the fourth suit that I made. So I started with the, the Scarlet Spider, mm -hmm. um, you know, the cane suit. Right. And before that, all that I had really done was made an Obi-Wan tunic. Right. Which, frankly, I, I'm, I'm not... If I were to do, like, finish right. Obi-Wan cosplay, I would totally scrap and start start from the beginning. Right. Um, but, I don't know, I just... I spent a lot of time doing research uh -huh. in those early days because I bought... Um, bought from one of those like AliExpress type companies I bought my right. game suit and I thought you know what I can do better um, and so I did something dumb <laughs> and I went straight to buying really expensive fabrics oh lord uh, yeah like I, so the cane suit I started with Parallel Life Studios oh Jesus so I, I was just like if I mess up it's an expensive mistake yeah um but I didn't. I used um, McLean Krieger's Chasm 2 pattern and uh, just changed the colors, modified it, and it seemed to work out. Oh, yeah. And then, then I made two classic suits, and those both helped advance my skills. And finally, the advanced suit, you know? I was just... I was determined. Yeah. Uh, McLean was... Oh, sorry, go on. I was just, especially because um, T-Jack was making his emblems. Right. And, you know, the, the opportunity struck. Yeah. yeah. McLean was the guy who made that really good um, Amazing Spider-Man 1 suit, right? Yeah, so McLean, um, may he rest in peace. Yes. Just, he made a really awesome TASM 1 and TASM 2 pattern. I don't know if he was the first but he was definitely like one of the pioneers oh, yeah. in those suits um and you know he was really influential in the cosplay community for oh yeah suits to everyone he also used to run a youtube channel i didn't actually find that um until recently mm -hmm. but he you know he was apparently really influential in a lot of people yeah i only i i, I think the only reason i didn't really like follow him very much was because his Instagram was very like void and like that's where I mostly like see all my Spider-Man friends doing content so I wish you know I wish I really took that time to know him better but rest in peace he was a legend he made it feels almost like small to be like you know oh he made an amazing suit or whatever but like you know, I I thought it was absolutely phenomenal but like you know I thought I I, he made some good stuff, and you know, I hope I hope there is somewhere out there that he's feeling better and 
you know, like a whatever. I'm not gonna get into that. But he his work was <laughs> phenomenal. Really yeah. Fast. No, we're talking about Spider Man, not existential. Like I don't know, whatever. So the so the first costume you ever made was your cane suit. Mm-hmm. Do you do you have like did you do costume design in like high school? Cause like that that for a first attempt that was amazing. Like I one of my questions. I wrote down to ask you was like what was one of your first ever costumes and it's actually astonishing to me that the first thing you did was the cane suit well so remind me to send you a picture of my uh, Deathstroke costume that I made that I made in high school I right um, Epicura and resin um, and actually well okay so background on cane I'm write down I chose the time to make um, Kane's suit because I'm from Houston, Texas. Right. And that is where Kane was for, you know, the comic run yeah. in 2012. He was trying to get away from Spider-Man mm-hmm. and he was going to Mexico and then he just got caught up in things happening in Houston. And so as a Houstonian and a Texan, it right. was really special to have a version of one of my favorite characters in my hometown. Like, right. I don't really feel like Texas gets its representation in pop culture. Mm-hmm. Um, it, ha- it has representation, it's just not the same as obviously places like New York and California. Right. Um, and so it was just really fun to get to see that. Um, and... But, you know, and, and so before that, while I didn't make many costumes, um, I did do a lot of stuff. Um, I, you know, my dad kind of instilled in me this uh, sense of if I if I want something, I can probably make it. Right. Um, so it started, I, I saw Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Star right. decided that I wanted a, a bullwhip and uh-huh. learned to make them. You made, so okay, wait. So you made a bullwhip. I made a great number of bullets. Holy and fuck! <laughs> that that was that was my business early in in high school. Jesus. Um, and and then after that it was lightsabers, right. uh, and and after that it was <laughs> costumes. Do you, like you're like a jack of all like so. Is there anything like you can't make like what? Because like this is all when you say you made lightsabers, you mean like you've made like LED stuff. Yeah, so okay. with the lightsabers, um, I, you know, I get the, the metal hilts, right. uh, and then I install the electronics in them to make them, you know, okay. do lightsaber things. What can't, uh, what can't you do? <laughs> I'm figuring that out. I, I haven't made an armored cosplay yet. Uh-huh. Um, go, going back to Deathstroke and, like, where I was in high school, um, when I was little and, like, pre-high school, I was really into Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. And then middle school, high school, totally lost that. Right. Um, and honestly, kind of forgot about it until about halfway through college. Like right. I just kind of forgot that I liked Spider-Man. Right. Um, and it, and it's, you know, I was really into uh, Halo. Mm-hmm. And I, I played the Arkham games a lot in high school. And so I was more interested in making, you know, armored cosplay. Right. But surprise, that's way harder to get into than sewing. Right. Um, it's flashier, and a lot of people, you know, they that's what they want to do. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I can only imagine if I had, you know, remembered my love for Spider-Man mm-hmm. and gotten into this hobby earlier, I can only imagine where I'd be. Right. Because, um, I mean, how early did you start? I I started about like six years ago. I oh my made God. my. It's right there. That's like the first suit. Hey. Echo, stop. That was the alarm for when we were supposed to start, but we started like fifteen minutes early. Yeah, that's the that's the first suit that I still have. It's my first red and blue one, but I don't have my other two. I made like a crappy twenty ninety nine and then a black suit, but then I made the yeah. red and blue one. And that is the only one that I still have. And I just sort of keep it up there. Nice. Yeah. It's a wonderful decoration. Yeah. I I don't have either of my first suits that I made. Mm -hmm. Um, 
the the cane suit I sold to Fund for Spidey. And what beautiful cinematic? Uh, okay, yeah, I, I, yeah, I know, I know that guy. I've seen him. I haven't yeah. seen him, but like, I've seen his stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the other one that I sold, um, it was my sit, my first classic suit. I sold that to a guy named C.J. Quast, who right. I haven't. Um, I, I don't know what he's doing. I haven't heard from him. Right. Heck, I even sold my third one. I sold the classic. Right. Uh, the classic was the red and blue one with the like the blue wrist. It kind of looked like the one, one from the TV actually, show, right? Because you said I I noticed was, you recently sold that one. I did recently sell that. That was a gift, uh, right? From uh, MT Spidey mm -hmm. or Amari, that's his name, um, friend of mine. Uh, that was a suit that he actually commissioned from Amazing Spider Lab. Oh, uh, a long time ago. This was, you know, pre them getting into fancy screen printing and such mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah I just I did some fixes on it and sent it on its way just because I you know I've got I've got a lot that I want to do uh, right and like I have a new classic I have the blues for a classic that I've been holding on to for almost two years now right and um, you know so I'm going to get that one done that mm -hmm. will be kind of my go-to um you know and then I, i've got like ideas for doing the all new all different suit right um, which have i told you my plan for that the all no you have not told me the plan for that i'm very hold on yeah no keep going okay so uh call me crazy but i want to take the original concept art by Alex Ross for the all-new, all-different suit. Right. And I want to make a pattern where the web lines are seams and where it is entirely made up of just little rectangles. That, no, uh, that's crazy so. talk. That's, like... <laughs> okay, no, go on, go on. Well, no, you're right. It is crazy talk. That would easily be the most work-heavy costume I've done. Right. But when you actually look at like mm -hmm. Alex Ross's artwork, or even the the version of the all new all different that's in the PS4 game, like mm -hmm. the webs are kind of indented, in right? The suit. And so I feel like doing it with seams would be the only way to, to do it properly. I suppose. Um, but that like I mean, that I, sounds I, I, crazy as hell. It, yeah, that would be a lot of work. I will probably try and do a just a mask. Uh, <laughs> see how that turns out yeah and then you know see if i want to keep going with that right um so we'll see yeah you you recently uh i i um i follow uh somebody on tiktok philadelphia spider-man and we recently we recently became mutuals and he you made an absolutely phenomenal classic suit for him let me put down the timestamp so i can put it on screen but you Sounds made great. a absolutely phenomenal classic suit for him, and you are your commissions are closed, correct? They are, and that has to do with life being so busy right oh, now. Oh yeah. Um, so, brief aside, I'm a grad student mm -hmm. uh, studying paleontology, and the next so it's it's November now. November to March is probably going to be really crazy for me. Right. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm just making big moves in my career. Uh, mm -hmm. But also, I, I do actually have two commissions that I will be working on during this crazy period. Uh -huh. um, one is a custom Spider-Gwen for Bianca Bella cosplay. She's uh, an Australian cosplayer and really great person. So, Are you shipping, shipping it out to Australia? Oh, yeah. Well, so I'm, I'm actually shipping a duo out to Australia. Oh. Shipping the custom Spider-Gwen. And then I'm shipping out my new PlayStation 5 Spider-Man 2 Advanced suit. Oh, God. I will be making that for uh, Christian Pilleroni. I hope that's how you pronounce that. I'm sorry if it's not Christian. Um, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be making him the new advanced suit from the trailer for Spider-Man 2. That's exciting. Um, I'm very excited. It, I 
have yet to... I guess with the advanced suit, I was kind of the, the first person to do it to that level of detail. Right. But um, I've never been, like, one of those people who's, like, first out the gate with a cosplay. Right. Um, like... You know, around the time that WandaVision was coming out, spoilers for those who haven't seen it, Wanda's new Scarlet Witch outfit at the end, like, someone had made a cosplay of that within three days. Damn! I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I, I was... It was insane. Um, and so that, I've never been able to do that, and obviously it's been months since that trailer was released, so right. I'm not going to be doing exactly that. Right. Um... But I, I do hope to do, or, you know, I, I will probably end up being the first doing that suit. Oh, yeah. Uh, and fun reveal, I will actually be making a digital pattern for that suit that I will be selling. Oh. I actually have a question about, like, patterns. Because, like, you, you, use, you use a lot of patterns for your work, right? Relatively. Um, right. But, yeah. What's the question? When you when you make these when you make these patterns, like I've asked you this before via DMs because I've had people because I'm doing commission, I've had people come to me about using digital patterns. When when you get a digital pattern, how do you like physically like just think of how you've done it in the past, like with a specific example. How have you gotten that pattern like physically to use? Because when you use, for those who don't like sew and do like this amount of costume stuff to its level, you you get the pattern, then you put it on your fabric, and then you cut it out over it. How do you get that pattern, like, tangibly? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I literally just print it out on standard printer paper, and then cut it out, and right. put it on the fabric. Do you... Um, do you like because like it's obviously like a small piece of paper you like glue all the pieces to or like tape all the pieces together right I, I tape good them god together and it's a long tedious process <laughs> and frankly i hate doing that right um and so that's actually part of the reason that i'm going to get into making my own patterns mm -hmm. but actually there are a whole lot of reasons for that right um, but I, i'll get into that in a little bit um when it comes to working with a digital pattern. Mm -hmm. um, so I obviously work with colored fabrics, right? Um, and I, you know, many people listening, I'm sure, are familiar with this. But for those who don't know, most Spider-Man costumes are what's called dye sublimated, where this dye is printed onto um, just white spandex. And so, let's say you're making a red and blue Spider-Man costume. Well, the red and blue are going to be on top of white fabric. Um, that's one of the techniques that they used in the Raimi Spider-Man films, and um, it's how most Spider-Man cosplay is done. And it's great. It can provide some really fantastic results. But one of the issues with that is that when the, when the fabric stretches, it kind of washes out and you lose some of the detail, some of the color. Um, and so... These, you know, nowadays, um, more and more Spidey cosplayers are moving to colored fabric because they like that really saturated look. Um, that's part of why I did what I did uh, when I decided to make my own. Right. Um, because I wanted those more saturated colors. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's good that, like, print costume and hero's time they're starting to provide that service right uh, because i feel like we're going to see some really good innovation mm -hmm. um but otherwise well kai it's up to people like you and me to to you know work with those fabrics oh yeah um, anyway so yeah that was a that was a long history on patterns now when i get a pattern that's like that for the dye sublimation um i will just take it into Photoshop, split the colors. Right. You know, so I've got like my blues, my reds. Gotcha. Um, and then I'll, I'll print them out after resizing them. Right. Um, and as for resizing them, that's just kind of a best fit. Mm -hmm. um, spandex generally can stretch about 10%. Mm -hmm. And so some recommend that you shrink your patterns 10%. Once you've matched it to a person's body, I don't do it that much. Um, I just kind of, 
you know, right. do, uh, do as best as I can. Yeah. So. Uh, how much do you, like, spend on a suit average? Because, like, I've... Like, for example, if you wanted to make, like, a standard red and blue Spider-Man suit, what? how much money would you generally drop on something like that? Because you buy, like, expensive-ass fabric. Well, if you're if you're asking how I would do the, a very expensive one, like, fully right. screen-printed, um, it would probably be... We'll just we'll we'll estimate I will say two hundred fifty on fabric. Jesus Christ. Um, and then like fifty on zippers mm-hmm. and paint and other supplies. Then we'll just a lot a whole hundred for emblems and souls. Oh my god. Um so we're at four hundred. Then we're gonna get a really nice face shell, five fifty. Uh so there you go. I Here's mean, your, it looks good. It looks it, good. It, well, and I wouldn't sell it for that because it still takes me no, of course not. 20 to 50 hours to put it together. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, but, you know, more and more, I'm, I'm actually kind of learning that it's it's not necessary to use those materials. Mm-hmm. Um, it is in plenty of cases. Like, so I'll, I'll sh- show my symbiote fabric. Oh, boy. Uh, this is a beautiful piece that a custom piece that I had from Parallel Life Studio. But this is what I'm going to be using for my black suit. And so hopefully Right. Oh yeah. See the blue black. Right. Um and I did this because I'm I'm really like basing my symbiote off of the work of Todd McFarlane. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the the Secret Wars cover where, right. like you see here, when it's in light, it's blue, and when it's you know in dark, it's yeah. Light. Um, so this this right here is a case where screen print is like necessary. I couldn't really get this book with anything else, right? Um, but then also, uh, so this this looks awful because no no uh, no lenses, right? This is my my PS4 just ask right um and it looks fantastic matches the suit looks really nice oh yeah but my temporary 1602 stunt mask is on just standard i'm gonna put this on standard spandex right and let's see where there we go yeah there you go not used to this no face shell thing i like no face shell I do too. I'm going to try and uh, make it work better. Right. Um, but this looks just fine. Yeah. This is, you know, standard spandex, no texture. Mm-hmm. Uh, the webs are, um, they're puff painted. But I'm actually wanting to start making kind of a line of what I'm going to call stunt masks. Um, cause I, have you, have you worn, um, obviously you've worn cosplay to a con, right? Yeah. Like you want to have masks that like, that look good because like they have the face shell in it, but you also want to have like the mask that you can just pull off. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I, I attended my first con this summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was fantastic. But the worst thing was trying to get the mask with the face shell like on and off. It was just hard. And oh, taking yeah. pictures, you know, it would have been a lot smoother if it were easier to slide that on and off. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and you know make a bunch of die sub versions of masks right. like this. Um, you know, like print the texture of this Mm -hmm. onto a mask like this that can just, you know, easily be put on, taken off. Right. um, Just to make life easier. Oh, yeah. No, I've always been more of, like, a mask guy, and, I mean, I guess it always kind of works for me, because I've got, like, that sharper jawline, like, the only thing Mm -hmm. that doesn't look good in my mask is, like, my ears and shit. But, like... I I could not imagine like wearing a face shell every time I put on a costume. Like it just feels like a pain. Like I I have a face shell. I put the ah. I I bought it off of Amazon because like I 
I just didn't want to go through all the bullshit of like this is like a it's like a Miles face shell that I put like put black plasti dip for the lenses on, and mm. I I've already tried putting it on. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Yeah. I'm not a. Did you put foam in it. No, I know I have not put any foam in it. That is actually. I will. Probably a good idea. Yeah, I will say that's important. Is making sure you've got you know, uh, like I I like to buy shells from. Matthew De La Cruz, mm -hmm. Matthew DC on Instagram, um, and so he his lens slots are kind of um, they're pressed into the mask. Right. So if you put foam around those, that really helps with the uncomfort because mm -hmm. otherwise you've got like the little wings on the end of the lenses poking into your forehead. Yeah. Um, so I, I will say the foam helps, um, but you know it. it uh, you're right that a um, just a fabric mask will always be more comfortable right. than a face shell. So. Yeah. Do you do you like do you ever do, have you ever like designed your own original Spider-Man costume or do you do you just make stuff that you see? The closest that I came to that was actually with my cane. So, mm -hmm. um, I. Some, I can't remember how far along my designs got before Insomniac Games revealed theirs. Right. Um, but I, you know, I did a version that had details like, um, you know, like the uh, the MCU suit. So mm. I, I drew out a version of the Kane costume that had, you know, the bands on the arm and other things that. that you know the MCU suits have right, um, and I also you know messed around with doing webbing patterns uh, because I I did know that um, the cane suit needed to be more complex than just red and black right. Um, you know I, I knew that probably wouldn't translate to real life all that well, um, but then Insomniac Games saved me the trouble and just revealed theirs and. So I, I loosely based mine off of that. Um, I, I will say that I, within the next year, want to do my second Kane suit and make it as close to a replica of the Insomniac Games version as possible. Oh, that would be cool. Um, yeah, well, and again, repping H-Town. Yeah. So, <laughs> actually, I have a fun plan for how I'm going to do the zippers on that one, but there will be no zippers on the waist, so, you know, you'll, I'll, I'll use, um, just keep, keep an eye out. I, I always do, bro. I love, I love seeing what you're doing. It's like, cause you, you always have like some amazing shit in the pot. Like I haven't seen a single one of your costumes that like, I wouldn't love to like, like see in person. Like I always think mm -hmm. you make amazing stuff consistently. Do you have? You make amazing stuff. I I I I will say every now and then I make a pretty good you know I make a pretty good thing every now and then. Uh, not everything I make is you know too amazing or whatever. But yeah, I think one thing I I realized about commissions was that it's very dangerous because I if I make a good like because un unfortunately a lot of my best creations have been commissions because like that's when I've just started using this like outsourced fabric that I bought from like other sources and when I made that ultimate spider-man suit the customer was really cool about it he was like yeah you can wear it and you can like you know go out and do a photo shoot with it and I fell in love with that costume and I was so upset that I had to sell it but mm. it's with the it's with um it's with Christian and he he looks good in it and I but man, I like when I finished that suit, I was like, fuck, I love it. And now I have to give it away. But you know, yep. I did, but it was, you know, <laughs> it was an absolutely no. phenomenal work. Well, I know, I know the, um, the feeling of, of commissions and, um, like, you know, we, we talked about the suit that I made for David, mm -hmm. um, Philadelphia Spider-Man that, you know, that's a, that's a very good suit. Um, or, you know, I I've received 
offers for both the advanced suit and the mild suit that some could say I were, you know, stupid for not taking them. Thing is, those suits have, well, so I, I took those suits and the spider Gwen right. that I made to Houston Comic Palooza mm -hmm. and entered the, com the, the cosplay contest. And you won. Yeah, didn't I? Did not expect that, um, right? Because I saw the, the competition, um, and it was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was uh, this eight foot tall orc, like a ten foot tall Venom, uh, Boba Fett. There was, you know, so much incredible stuff. A fantastic uh, Wanda and Agatha cosplay. Mm -hmm. um, and the judges decided they liked my stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, you know, I just... Also, big, big shout out to Rumpelstiltzkin, who made a fairy Sailor Moon cosplay, who she and I were actually previously in the Ultimate Online Cosplay Championship as sewing finalists together. Mm -hmm. And so we, we did that one, and then we did... Uh, Comic Palooza, kind of sheer coincidence. Uh, that was really fun. Uh, so anyway, she's awesome. Makes really good stuff. Uh, if anyone is looking for neat non-Spidey stuff, heck, she even has a Spidey costume. So, um, how did we get here? Oh yeah, right. So the costume that, uh, contest. That contest is the reason that I'm not going to sell right any of those three. Would um, you Would you be willing to like? tell like what the highest offer you got for the advanced suit was i don't know if that's appropriate that's fair I guess this is your podcast no you can so. no you can you can you can not but if you if you if you're feeling bold and you want to say it I'll, I'll people can guess in the comments okay are there comments on podcasts? there are comments there there are comments right, sometimes uh this this channel like this is my most popular channel but it's funny because it's not even my main one and I spend like the most time on my other channels and I like my animation channel is my main one but I'll come back on this one every now and then and see what people are doing and like if I leave it alone for like a month I'll get like a lot of like activity on it but yeah people can guess so I mean if y'all are open to do that you can do that um no go on well no but I just totally know what you mean about like selling off your work and also, on the note of commissions and mine being closed, so I, I actually kind of am moving away from them just because there's a lot of stuff that I want to do and not everyone is going to commission that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I am currently talking with someone about um, Miles Miles's new 10th anniversary costume. I like, okay, so, this is a hot take. I like that one. Yeah. I, I, I think it's good. <laughs> I didn't like it. Like, mm -hmm. the first cover art that they drew that was the, like, semi-realistic thing where he was just jumping. Yeah. Um, I felt like that particular art piece lacked any structure. Right. And so there wasn't, you know, there were no recognizable shapes, and I feel like that's an important part of a superhero design. Yeah. That said... The actual concept art that's that's much more 2D and shows that it's very obviously a jacket on top of a, you know, standard Spidey costume, uh, that I like. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, you know, I would love to get to do that costume because mm -hmm. I would be able to design that big old hoodie. Well, yeah. Not a hoodie, a big old jacket. It's like a uh, tech wear thing. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I've already thought of, you know, so my 1602 costume, I have right here. Oh, right? Lord. Uh, this actually taught me how to do, like, drawstrings. And so I was just, you know, I learned how to do drawstrings specifically for the pants. Which right. In there. Also yeah, let me see the back. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Oh, this thing was painful. To <laughs> I love it, though. It's so good very it was a 
a lot of fun. Oh, the yeah. new skill, drawstrings, mm-hmm. which I would then go and apply to the new jacket. Right. Um, or like all the buttons that I learned to sew. I Another one that I would like to do over the next year is Spider-Man Noir. Um, based on the uh, Shattered Dimensions version. Oh, of yeah. Lawsuit. I I if I if I could change one thing about the new Miles Techwear suit, I know like the canon reason that like he doesn't. Spoilers for anybody who hasn't read the comic, I guess, because like apparently he okay, so this is like f- hot off the heels of like the clone thing where Miles was like, you know what, I'm gonna get cloned, whatever, and Peter was like, no, mm-hmm. don't do that, and yeah, it was his decision, yeah. right? Yeah, no, I'm kidding, but like he gets cloned. And Miles is like, I don't want to wear my old costume anymore. It, like, just feels wrong. But I I still wish Miles, like, had a similar mask design. Like, I wish he almost, like, I wish he kept the mask from his first costume. I Because I feel With like, yeah, yeah, because it's more recognizable as Miles. Because I feel like it's you're almost prone to make the mistake that, like, this is this, like, Kane or something? Because, like, I feel mm-hmm. like the mask is literally just Kane's mask. Yeah. Like, and I, I get that, like, you know, it's hard to make a new Spider-Man costume nowadays because, like, it's either Peter Parker or it's either somebody else completely different and you don't really know. And I feel like mm-hmm. a good thing for Miles would be to make it so that you can tie it back to Miles strictly from the design, which you already kind of can because, like, it's, like, street clothes and, like, you know, like, fashion wear. But I, but it's a hot take. I like it. I think it's good. Do you have any hot takes about any Spider-Man costumes? Like, what are some of your guilty pleasures or, like, controversial favorites? I don't really like the big-time suit. That's a that's uh, a pretty hot take. I, I, yeah, I mean, and it's kind of funny when I, when I tell you that that's actually going to be the next big project that I do. After I finish the symbiote suit, I'm making the big-time uh, suit. I hate it. I'm going to spend $500 on. on fabric on it. Nah, man. <laughs> we'll, uh, it's the lights that scare me. Oh, now. Jesus. You're gonna, like, do, like, the, um... Someone's done that before. Have you seen Marvel Becoming when they made the Velocity suit yes, for... Yes, I have. What's his name? Aaron... It was Aaron Ribbon. Yes. It was their model, uh, and it was Castle Corsetry who mm-hmm. made the actual suit. Uh, right. And yes, they did well. I think I can do better. Um, I, I will say, go check out, um... So, Remy Domino cosplay. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a cosplayer out of Louisiana who mostly does um, Bakugo from My Hero Academia. Right. But they actually made um, these fantastic light up costumes for Bakugo and Deku um, in the, the new movie. It, like, they are. You should put a picture on screen if that's Here, a thing you can let do. Me they are phenomenal. Timestamp uh, it. And so seeing that work, that is really what kind of, you know, when I was looking into different methods that I could use for the big time suit, uh, and I found their work, you know, that was, made me realize, oh, this could actually look really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and so real quick, the reason I don't like the big time suit is because the primary color for the lights is green. Right. And I don't think any Spider-Man costume should be green. I think uh, it makes it work. I th- I didn't like the big time suit very much until the PS4 game, but I think it makes it work. It, well, it's if it were like, I like it when it's red, mm-hmm. and I like I've seen some edits where it's more like a sky blue, and I really like that. Oh yeah. Um, and so I. You know, I'm planning on making mine RGB and fully programmable. Right. So, you know, I'll be, I, I will be able to do the accurate green. Right, including, like, the eyes. The eyes are also going to be... Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, and so this, this actually gets into why I've been choosing a lot of the projects that I have lately. It's because I'm trying to learn new skills. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I feel like I've kind of you can always do more um, in developing certain skills and like 
I'm planning on doing another red and blue suit. Mm -hmm. um, but with that red and blue suit, I also want to design my take on web wings, which you have so graciously helped me out. I, 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 that's a little too generous. I, I don't, I think my web, I, I feel like I could find a way to do the web wing. No, I feel like, no, okay, because it's almost impossible with the way that, that, like, I think it would look cleanest to do. But, I'm sorry, go How on. How do you on. think it would look cleanest? I, because I feel like the most optimal way would be to sew it on the inside, but, like, you can't really do that because it bunches up really uncomfortably when you, like, you know what I mean? Because, like, I would, I thought the best way to do it would be to embed the web into the seam. But when you, like, okay, so my web wings are cut out, like, at a 90 degree angle, and they're sewn at this part, and this part just sort of hangs out. So if you were to embed it into your seam, you'd flip your suit inside out. So and then when you're sewing this side part, you sew the web in like that. But the thing is, is when you go to do it on the arm, I feel like it would bunch up uncomfortably and it wouldn't come out how you wanted. I did think of something. What if you could like cut the web like so you have like your right triangle that's your web wing. If you what if you like cut it down the middle and then like I don't know. I don't know, but I'm I'm just pitching. But well, let me help you out. Right. With what I think my solution to this issue is: mm -hmm. don't have the web wing all the way in the armpit. Have it mostly on the arm and right. mostly down the side, but have a little unconnected portion where the where the sleeve seam connects mm -hmm. with the torso. Mm -hmm. And then there's this little space up here. It can even be so small that no one would see it. Right. Um, and, you know, then, I mean, yes, it'll bunch up, but, you know, it, it's not going to be in your armpit. Right. Um, between your arm and your side, rather. And so I, I feel like that way gets around a lot of the flexibility issues right. as well. Um, and just allows for... Um, you know more creativity and design mm -hmm. and so i i'm gonna try a few things mm -hmm. but that's that's definitely something that i want to do um but anyway so so getting back to why i've mentioned this right new skills are just i i find them to be more fun to develop um right you know i i want to do Spider-Man Noir mm -hmm. because it's different. Right. Um, you know, I want to redo the mask for 1602, so like I'll still have this that I can take to, mm -hmm. you know, actual events. But then I also want to do so on on the on this costume, the red bits are actually made of linen. Right. Uh, it's it's linen for the red and then blue velvet. Mm. Um, and so I want to do a mask out of this linen, which has no stretch at all. Somehow design a Spider-Man mask with zero stretch. Right. Um, You're probably going to need I a zipper want... for that. <laughs> and then the extra challenge is keeping it historically accurate. So I might even want to do a kind of lacing it up. Oh. So that'd be interesting. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, I think technically, the you know, if you really wanted to do a historically accurate kind of thing, you could knit one. But I don't know how to knit. Yeah. Uh, and that seems like a big time investment. Oh yeah. Liam, you want to see me roll an ad? Yes. I sponsor myself. Hello, my name is Kai from the Probably Spider-Man channel, and uh, I make costumes. That's very apparent. Buy a suit from me, you fuck. Nice shot. I'm doing commissions. Um, I will list the prices over here. I'm essentially just gonna do a short little explanation about how my commissions work. If you want more information, because this video is probably not gonna provide you enough with it, I just need to give you the initiative then you can check out my story highlights because I'm going to put a highlight on my story. I already have one, but you can see everything you would need to know about commissions from me. Anyway, 
So for the base price, which is the $150 suit price, that is the base, that is the base. You have to build what you want off of these bases. The first base price, which is $150, you can get a jumpsuit, which is built off of a, of a Zentai Zone bodysuit, and I can do whatever you want with it. So it will be made out of just basic spandex, and if the design is not too complicated, we can stay at the basic jumpsuit tier. So essentially what that means is that you will get a basic Spider-Man costume that doesn't have a complicated design. All right, the design is the one that you choose. You choose the design and I make it. You're not just getting a classic Spider-Man suit unless that's what you want. Number two, this is when I start to assemble the suit by myself completely. The number two option includes one use of fancy fabric, which means one of the fabrics in your costume will have some sort of texturing or detail on it, like this. I, what I will not do is I will not paint on texture. The texture will be bought onto the fabric because if it is painted on, I cannot guarantee that it will stay together and stay the same quality for as much as printed fabric can. The four, the second, fuck, the third option. The third option is the $400 option. The $400 option will get you two uses of fancy fabric all for your costume which means you will get two fabrics with special detailing on it that will be on your suit if you want more than two we can talk about that but it will cost more again if you need your spider sona designed if you need a spider-man costume for a fan film that looks legit i will put all my work on screen you can bam 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 whatever you can look at it here's my work um you can message me on instagram Okay, I only take PayPal. I only take PayPal. Okay, we can negotiate about anything else, but I would mo I would prefer PayPal over anything else. I will. The main way of messaging you will be on Instagram, unless I state otherwise. I will provide you with process pictures of your suit. I will provide you with any info you would need to know about the costume. It usually takes me about two weeks to create a costume when it's your turn in line. There is a line. There is a queue. You have to, you know. After we've started negotiating your costume, then you will be put in the queue and you do not have to pay until it is your turn in line and we do half and half payments. So it means once it's your turn, you give me half of the payment. You give me the money, okay? And then I use that money to buy your materials and then once the suit is done and I'm about to ship it off to you, you pay me the rest plus the $16 shipping and then it is sent off to you. I. Right now, I'm only comfortable with doing shipping within the US. If you are in the US, that would be preferable. If you want to negotiate with me about shipping anywhere else, we will figure it out. But I mostly deal within the US. Thank you so much. And um, we're going to get back to the podcast with ATX. Okay. I was expect I because I, I, I just I made like a short little like ad for commissions that I'm going to put right here. That's the meme. But I'm going to cut this part out. So. Um, so yeah, you can say like you can say anything and it will be gone. I can say it will disappear. Spider-Man Lotus doesn't excite me, and no one will hear anything. That was sarcasm. Oh my so, god! Okay, yeah. you scared the fuck out of me. I was about to be like, what? All right, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back from the ad. No, I'm putting that in. I'm putting that in. You're putting that in. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. Uh. All right, we're back. We're back from the ad. Um, by the way, something I forgot to mention in that video, I made this mistake once. I'm never making it again. If you can get grounded by your parents, I'm not making a suit for you. Okay? That's that. That's it. Like, I recently did a suit for this kid. I'm going to timestamp it so I can put it on screen. All right, 45... 07 2099 I made a suit for this kid and I just finished it and I DM'd him over and over again I was like dude where are you are you gonna pay for this suit right and his stepmom gets on the Instagram DMs and is like hi he's grounded how much do I own you I'm never if you can get grounded I'm not making you a costume I'm sorry I don't care like straight up straight up if you can get grounded I'm not doing it I'm not doing it, but that's it. You could, uh, you, you could get parental permission. You can get parental permission. I forgot to timestamp the ad, but it's fine. Ugh. Well, the, um, oh, what was I, is that the suit recently that you, like, totally finished the commission and then had to sell it? The kind of, like, 29 Yeah, I tried to auction it off. Here, I have the, oh, no. yeah, I have the, I saved the 
the, the reference I printed out for Oh, that's a sick reference. Damn. Yeah. I, I keep all my old references in this book. Like, I have my, my Strike Force references. Um, I keep... Uh, I just keep all the references that, you know, people give me for their costumes in here. It's just like a big old book of stuff I've done. Nice. Ugh, oh, alright. I, so, I'm gonna get, so with, like, the last, like, what, like, 14 minutes we have left, because I only want to keep you for, like, an hour. What are, what is some, okay. Do you have, like, a favorite on-screen Spider-Man? And I know this is, like, murky water, and that everybody loses their minds, but, like, I do this every podcast. Okay. I do. Okay. Um... And of the of the three primary options, I feel like you're gonna pick some bullshit. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, all of them are decent, but like I feel like you're gonna throw throw. A... I'm a Toby guy. Okay, there we go. And I think I think that has to do with uh, my age. Mm -hmm. uh, Spider-Man is the first movie that I remember seeing in theaters. Mm -hmm. Specifically, I remember watching. Norman turn into the Green Op Goblin and kill that guy, mm. uh, and that like scarred me. As oh well. yeah. Uh, but that's yeah, and I just he resonates the most with me. Right. Um, I will say when I was an angsty teen, you know that's when the Amazing Spider-Man came out, and that was really well timed because I I really liked. And still do like the Amazing Spider-Man, and it it was, you know, it was the perfect angsty teen Spider-Man for angsty teen Liam. Um, believe it or not, I still have not watched the Amazing Spider-Man. You have not seen that movie. I have not never seen that movie. Nope. What? Never, ever. I've, do you like know what happens, like the plot? So I have watched like more hours of video essays on uh -huh. the movie than the actual movie. Right. So like I've seen it broken down and I've I maybe I've seen the whole movie. I've just <laughs> you've just never seen how how God intended it. Well, how Sony intended Yes. It. Same thing. Um so and then um uh, I guess I'll give my controversial screen opinions. I really liked Tom in Civil War. Uh, and then he kind of lost me for a bit. Like, I, and I, I will say, I enjoy, I enjoy right. Tom Spider-Man. I have a lot of fun with the MCU movies. It's just he doesn't resonate with me in the same way that yeah. most other Spider-Men do. Right. Um, and I find for me, the the main thing that I like in a Spider-Man is that he's kind of doing his own thing. Yeah. Um, and and like he works by himself to a fault. Right. To the point that so PS4 does this perfectly with the whole Mary Jane getting into dangerous situations and him feeling like. You know, he has to mm -hmm. rescue her. Um, you know, he he's so used to working by himself that it, it leads to problems. Right. Um, and so then when other people, you know, step up to help him and he actually accepts it, like, that's yeah very satisfying to me and also resonates with me. Um, because I'm not really that used to accepting help. Right. Um, but I really appreciate it when I get it. So, you know, and I just... And so Tom's Spidey... We'll say the the end of Homecoming did that well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I enjoyed, like, the high school road trip aspects of uh, Far From Home. Right. Um, the... I mean, I, I enjoy it. Again, like I said, I enjoy it. It's, yeah. It doesn't resonate with me as much. Yeah. Um, but I am very excited for No Way Home. Oh, it's yeah. It's not just because 
In fact, no, it's not because of the possibility that Toby and Andrew will show up, because I'm not getting my hopes up for that. Mm-hmm. I'm just very excited to see, um, you know, Doc Ock and the Goblin back. I'm excited by what Tom Holland's actually said about the movie, which is that if they were to make another Spider-Man movie, the characters would be in a very different place from where we have seen them. Right. That's exciting to me. Oh, yeah. Um, And so I'm just, I'm very interested to see what happens. Right. When you when you said earlier that you enjoy Toby because of your age because like you resonate with like you know I usually I feel like if you're gonna go for the age pick you're gonna go for the one that that is always left out I never see anybody talk about him but Peter B Parker is my favorite on screen Spider Man he's my favorite oh really he I know it technically doesn't count but he was on a movie yeah. screen so it counts for me I love yeah. him so much I think his because all these Spider Man have sort of like silent arcs, a lot of them. Like, as bad as the movie will get, there's like an internal arc that isn't really spoken of that you can see going on. And I, I think Peter B. Parker's is my favorite because he just wants to go home. He doesn't want to deal with this anymore. He wants to get to, you know, he wants to get back to his like sad, depressing life. But then he's like, he just realizes that, like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. So he doesn't want to save the universe. Like, the reason why he wants to save the universe isn't because he, you know, wants to sacrifice himself to save the world for the greater good. It's just because he doesn't want to live anymore. He's, like, Miles... Miles is, like, that one spark of hope that he has. But once Miles isn't, like, ready, he realizes that, like, it's over. It's, that's it. There's no more. So when he wants to leave himself behind so that everyone else can go home it's not because he wants to save the world it's because he wants to not do it anymore he gives up but then miles finally comes back right and miles has been sort of imbued with the knowledge that some of the knowledge that peter b parker has given to him and he finds this hope again he like he's he's so excited like he's he's like he's like a perfect example of like a depressed spider-man going through stuff because he's always flipping back and forth he's always like relapsing and falling back into his things and that's why i love peter b parker so much because he's like i want to go home i don't want to go home i want to go home i don't want to go home he does this when he's like when he first gets there he does this when he gets to the collider he does this he so when he gets there he's like i want to go home when miles can't do it He's like, I'm going to die. When Miles shows up, he's like, I can do it. But then at that last scene where he sends Miles off to fight the Kingpin, he's like, I want to die. But then Miles like kind of gives him that spark of hope by showing him like one of the things he taught him, which was like the kick move. And he's like, I can do it. I love him so much. And I was a little bit upset when they only recently confirmed that he would be in the next movie. And I was like, he he wasn't going to be there in the first place. What? Yeah, no, I, I would have just imagined he needed to be there. I love him. Um, I and you know what? I hope that more people talk about him, and I hope that. I mean, I know what people are asking when they say like, "Who's your favorite Spider-Man?" and they're just talking about the big yeah. three. But I do hope in the future. Not only that people can be a little more um, nice with sharing their opinions, but also that they bring the other characters to the table. Like, yeah. Or, or even, you know, who's your favorite Miles? Yeah. Spider-Verse or PS4? Oh, Five. Spider-Verse, no um, question about it. Yeah? Yeah. I, I'm interested to see where, where PS5 goes Oh yeah. next. Um, and then, I mean... Inevitable Sony or MCU Miles, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I we'll have to see what they give him because they've given a lot of Miles stuff to Peter, uh, Peter, MCU Peter part. But I just realized I I remember seeing a tweet once that was like, "Man, you guys just want Spider Man to be miserable. You're upset when he's all happy go lucky." And I'm like, if it means Peter B. Parker, I want him miserable all the time. 
Oh my God. Give it to me, bro. I love him so much. He's like, yeah. nobody talks about him except for me, and it makes me really upset that nobody keep, loves him as much as I do. Keep spreading the good word. Um, yeah. Oh, man. I actually went as Peter B. Parker to my local Comic-Con about like three years ago, barefoot. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, I did the Peter B. Parker barefoot. Like I, I wore the suit, I wore the sweatpants, and I didn't have any shoes on. And I, like everybody, I've seen, I saw other Peter B. Parkers there, but they weren't as committed as I was. My suit might not have been the most accurate because I wasn't wearing the right mask because I didn't have one. But I, I won. I won that day, and everybody else lost because I was the well, most I, committed. <laughs> I too wore Peter B. Parker at a con. Uh, but that was just because I was so wiped out from Saturday right. that I needed a comfort cosplay. What was the, wait, what was like the base suit? Was it one that you made? It was the one you were talking about with the blue on the wrist. Oh, okay, I see. Oh man, it we're almost, worked, and, and yeah. No, go on. Today I, I will design a comfortable Spider-Man costume. Yeah. One that is like, you know, this isn't gonna happen. But <laughs> I found enough like recycled Lululemon like shirts. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever felt that material. No. That stuff. Mm, that stuff is comfortable <laughs> and stretchy. Right. And so if I turn that into a Spidey suit, man, that would be comfortable. And go to bed in that. Yeah. <laughs> be great. Oh man. All right, we're almost at the hour mark here. I know you got something to do in like ten minutes. So I'm gonna let you go, Liam. This was this was a very fun cast. I enjoyed this. I was actually really happy when I was able to get you on, because when I asked you, I was afraid that I put you in an uncomfortable spot, because like you know I didn't want you to be like mm, like no, I didn't want you to feel mean for saying no. But you you did came on, and <laughs> like, I yeah. Mm, no, my talent requires. Being no. <laughs> no yeah. yeah. No, your Liam is honestly genuinely talented. I I love your work. It is amazing. Remember. It's ATX Spider. You guys probably knew that coming into the stream. Is there any like socials you want me to plug in the description other than like your Instagram and stuff? Well, I pretty much run my Instagram. I've got my uh, Kofi going. It's kind of a little dead right now, but when I start selling patterns, that will be where I do it. Um, we'll see if I ever make a TikTok comeback. Thinking about it. I, dude, I'll uh, tell you what. Like that. That that the algorithm's really good for like blowing up. You just gotta step on one mine at the right time, and then you're set. Like I got 10k I from like one thing. I had one video that did really well. Mm -hmm. We'll see if I can do it again. Yeah. Uh, and but I do have one final thing that I want to say. Okay. Kai, your work hugely impresses me. Thank there you. There are. I don't. Not everyone needs to make their own Spider-Man costume, no. but as a creator, it makes me very happy when people do. And thus, the fact that you do that and do it so well, and do it with just you know the the materials that you have. You know, me, I'm some schmuck going and buying stuff that's probably too expensive. You, you're doing, you know with good materials you're doing like the full peter barker thing yeah and i just i'm legitimately impressed by your work and um keep it up all you watching just remember who has liam bragging rights not you <laughs> not you sit down no i'm just kidding make your own suit yeah and show me make your own suit and then see if you can get your liam bragging rights because i got him i got him all right. Thank you so much for coming on, Liam. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. My it. pleasure. I, again, please go follow Liam. I, like, and, you know, I'll be keeping up with your work. I love your stuff. I'll be making cool stuff. That is, that is true. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. I, I'm excited to see who I can get on next, but I doubt I can get anybody better than Liam for a long, long, long time, or anything more exciting than Liam for me personally. But I'll, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Go to the bathroom. You've been sitting here for like an hour. You Bye. know what? Being... <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, go on. We're still... I can, I can like, edit it any time.
Oh, uh, I was just going to be like, being in grad school or being in college makes you have to learn how to do that. Oh, yeah. But were you saying that to the audience? I was talking to the audience. Unless you peed while watching the video. Because that's weird. But like it's only it's only you don't think about how weird it is when you're when you're doing it. But like, well, we can't hear that. Yeah, we can't hear you peeing or busting it down with like the poopies. But like, whatever, man. Go, bye. Goodbye. We're done. Okay. <laughs>